In this chapter, we will create a custom Keyshot material for our gemstone. Next, using the texture and alpha maps we made in Chapter 10, we will layer a hand-painted golden image of Mount Fuji, as well as some dirt and weathering onto our gemstone. So now it's time to work on our gemstone that you see in the center here. As you remember previously, we did our Photoshop work for the Mount Fuji design, as well as making the dirt mask that's on the side here. So let's go ahead and jump into Keyshot and get started. So what I want to do first is I'm going to drag a different material on top of this uh, object right here. And I'm in the paint area. I'm just going to pick one of these glossy paints. Uh, even this red one is fine. And I'll drop that on here. And then, um, as usual, we just need to go into the material and start working on it. So I'm going to select that and material graph. We will open that up. OK. So first part I'm going to do, I'm just going to change the color here down to black so that we have a black background for this. And this is going to be the base of our gemstone. Now, if I really wanted to, I could make some kind of interesting subsurface type material. But in this case, it's more about seeing this as a pure glossy object for me that we can then layer some different materials on top of. First thing I'm going to do too is I don't want this super pure reflection right now. As you remember the roughness, we have it set to zero. So this is like a mirror reflection. I want this to be broken up just a little bit. So I'll probably put it at like a 0.05. Even that is way too strong, 0 0.005. I think that helps a little bit because see how it even blurs this out just a tiny bit. I'll show you the difference between that and zero. There's zero. So let's do that, 0 0.005 and we get just a little bit of blur on there. And I think that'll make a nice difference. Uh, next thing I wanna do is put a little bit of a scratch map on here. Now, if you guys purchase the downloadable uh, tutorial online, you can go into one of our folders here where we have the scratches, mass scratches gem invert. And let's just take that and drag it into our scene and hide that. For those of you that don't have that, you can go to the ArtStation page. Let's find that real quick. The ArtStation page will be linked at the bottom of the uh, YouTube video if you're watching from YouTube in the summary. But otherwise, just come here, ArtStation, look for Seth Thompson. Uh, we're going to click on here, the amulet section. And if you go down through the images that are included in here, way down to the bottom, you will find this map right here. So this scratches map. You can just take that and click the download button, and then you put that in whatever folder you want to use and go to Keyshot. So here we have it in Keyshot. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to set this into the bump because I want a little bit of uh, surface breakup on the object here. Now, obviously, this is way too strong. Let's zoom in here a little bit. So let's double click on this node, on the uh, bump node, and let's take a look at bump height, change that down to something like a 0.1. I think that's a little better. Even that seems pretty aggressive. Let's change that to maybe a 0.05. I think that'll be good. I just basically want to break up having the surface look perfect. And if you needed to uh, make it look even less broken up, you could go into this uh, image file in Photoshop and add some more white spots so that it's not just so scratchy. But for my purposes, I think this will work fine. So now we have the base kind of gem material set up. So the next thing I want us to do is to actually create a layered material on top of this. So we're gonna be bringing in that gold flaking that you remember from the image here. So next we're creating this gold flaking that we see on top. I think uh, we can get another material out of the paint. Let's just go down through here, find a nice gold one. Um, you could go through the metal settings here and find one, but I found that the paint here more accurately represented what I needed when I was doing this. And this, I think this paint material, orange peel amber is perfect. So let's drag that into our material scene. You'll see by default, there's like a little bit of bump setting set in this. Let's go ahead and press C so we can have that node active on our object. Now you can see we have this pure gold looking paint. And since this uh, Mount Fuji symbol would have been painted on top of here, this is a perfect thing to start with. So let's go ahead and drag those Mount Fuji symbols that we created previously in here. As you remember, uh, these are the ones that we developed. 
And uh, for those of you following along with the tutorial, um, you would have gotten that at some point even from the, once again, art station page. So if you have jumped ahead and you just came to this section, you can go through here, download these images, and go back to some of the other chapters to check out what we did. So I'm just going to drag these into our material editor. I'm getting the mask that we had as well as the color image. And I'm just going to press C here to see this one active on our object. As you can tell, it's actually in the wrong location right now. So let's change this to UVW. And now it's centered properly. You can see that the name is in the right direction and everything. And this looks correct to me. So let's plug this one into the base color, as well as down here it says metal, metal color, base metal. We'll plug it into both. And let's press C on the metallic paint. And now you can see that this is starting to sit on top of our object. The thing is, is this is a material that's just showing over the entire thing. So now we need to break it up with our opacity map. We will drag that in here. And you notice that it's not lining up properly. That's because, as always, whenever you drag in a new texture map, mapping type goes to box. So let's set this to UV. And now we kind of have this sitting on here properly. Uh, the opacity map just looks kind of funny right now because um, technically this is making something invisible in world space. So let's go ahead and drag this in here on top of our base paint node or you know, we shouldn't even call that paint node. We should change this to something like, um, in fact, let's do it. Let's change this to gem. And now we have the painted gold that's sitting on top of here. And I can demonstrate that this is working properly because we have the alpha map that's going through here. This is the original base underneath. Notice how you can see the bump maps that we had from the paint material that's right here and that bump section from the scratches that we had are not seen underneath the Mount Fuji design. And that's because we have the layered material that's sitting on top of this. But let's add a little bit of bump into our painted metal. And I think I'm probably just going to do this by having it bump around the edges here where the opacity map's working. So it feels like we have thick paint that's sitting on top of here. So I'm going to take this, let's right click duplicate, drag that right into our bump slot. Now right now it's just way, way, way too strong. So I'm going to take this and put it down to like a 0.01, maybe 0.1. You just have to try some different settings. So now you can feel there's a little bit of thickness in between here that makes it feel like this is kind of popping along the sides and the paint sitting on top. Let's zoom out a bit because it's all about seeing how it reads from a bit of a distance. I think that reads fairly well. Maybe we go a little bit thicker, change that to a 0.2. That's maybe be a little too much. So let's just stay with 0.1. Yeah, and I think that that works pretty well. Okay, I think next what we need to do is start working on the dirt that's going to be building up around the edges here. Because if we take this and just look at it by itself, it's working nicely. And it's looking realistic, but obviously we need a bit more dirt in here to kind of tie this in with the theme where there's rust in between these metal places. So you guys remember how we made the rust and material previously. We're just going to be doing the same thing. So let's come over here to our materials. Let's type the fuse. We're just going to make a new shader again. Drag that into here. We have the uh, diffuse material. Let's double click that. We'll call this one dirt. And let's go to our texture section. You remember the rusted? Let's drag that in here. And I noticed our diffuse went away. That's just a bug. Not a big deal. Let's go back to our materials. Let's drag that diffuse back in here again. And we'll zoom in. And let's drag this into our diffuse slot. Let's press C to activate this so we can see that this is our active shader that's on our gemstone. I think maybe we can have just a bit more tiling on this. So I'm going to click, select this node, the texture map rusted node. And let's switch this to UV mapping. 
Okay, actually that feels about right. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to zoom out. Let's right click duplicate this so that we can make this into a bump as well. Drag that into our bump slot. And I'm going to change the bump height down just a little bit, maybe to like a 0.5. Because I felt like it was just a bit too strong a minute ago when I was looking at it. Even this might be a little too strong, but let's just keep it this way for now. The other thing I think we need to do is we don't want it to feel like this is a rust color that is sitting on top of the gemstone because it wouldn't really be rust building up. So let's get that one right click utilities believe it was the color adjust node and for a diffuse section we're just going to plug that right into color here and then from the output click these two into one another so let's double click on this color adjust and now we can turn down the saturation some get it more into those brown ranges I'm actually I think we're going to be in pretty good shape here I think this feels a little bit better, this this color that we're seeing now. Uh, final thing that we need to do is we need to bring in the opacity map that we created previously that represents that dirt look. So remember the mask that we created that built this bit of dirt previously? Let's find that. I saved this into our masks folder. Here you go, gem dirt mask. Let me go back to Keyshot. And I'm just going to drag this into our scene and link this up into our opacity channel. And it's actually lining up quite nicely. So it looks like the mapping type came as UV. That's a surprise, that's nice. Let's invert it though, because obviously it's doing the wrong thing. So you guys remember what to do here. Right click, utilities, color invert. just reconnect these nodes in and out and now we have it uh, pumping in here nicely where you can see the dirt is around the edge and then finally we need to drag this and layer this on top of the gem so now this one is label one and then we'll select the uh, gem section here and press C and now we have the dirt working in nicely with our image to me it feels like maybe it's just still a little bit too rich of a color so I'm going to come back here to this color adjust I'm going to bring this saturation down even more. Now let's look. I feel like this is maybe a little bit better. And if I'd wanted to, I'd probably go in here and take a little bit more time to clean up some of this where it's not just the perfect transition, like it looks super dark or super thick on the dirt, and then it goes right to the cleaner metal underneath. I would normally kind of go into Photoshop, take some time to add a little bit better of a transition line here, but I think for the purposes of this demo, this works quite nicely. So we can kind of zoom out and start to let this render nicely in the background. While it's doing that, I think this is a good time for us to rename this material, clean it up a bit, and save it. I'm going to do the align nodes and work area thing just to get this more organized. Um, I'm going to name some of our layered materials here. For example, paint metallic. Remember, we have that one called metallic paint, so that works nicely. Interior diffuse white. Let's call this one um, dirt. This one painted metal. And then we have gem. So I think that's a good setup here. Uh, paint gloss red. Rename material. I just right click this and then rename material. So let's call this one Amulet Gem. Okay. And then let's actually save this into our Amulet demo folder that we created previously. So right click, save the library. Amulet demo, okay. And now you see that we have the amulet demo material as well as our metallic amulet. 
material. These are both saved in here. So congratulations, you guys have built and created a bunch of materials in Keyshot, and this will unlock a huge world of possibilities for you. In the next chapter, I'm just going to show some basic setups that you can do with lights, as well as uh, some basic rendering settings with Keyshot to get a final really nice looking image. This tutorial and its downloadable content is available now on my QBrush, Gumroad, and Steam stores, which are linked in the description below. Watch the following video to see what is included with your purchase. If you purchase this tutorial, here is a preview of all the bonus content you will receive. Firstly, in ZBrush, I've included three different versions of the amulet. One, my final sculpted version with all the ornamentational details and distraction. Two, just the sculptural details like ornamentation. Three, a version without anything so you could follow along and create your own during the process. Secondly, you will receive the final Keyshot file demonstrated here, which contains all of the texture maps, lighting, and everything that is shown during the tutorial. The thing that I find really useful about this is having access to the material graph and seeing the complex custom materials that are created during the tutorial. This will really help you with understanding how to create your own complex materials in Keyshot. Next, you will receive all of the final PSD files showcased throughout the tutorial, including this gold-painted Mount Fuji design with all of my different layering processes, as well as the custom crest base that is used later for sculpting in ZBrush based off of masks. Also, you'll get all of the final texture maps that are showcased during the tutorial, such as these, which are all tileable. You will also receive all of the original videos in downloaded format at their full high definition resolution. Also, I have included dozens of high quality personal art images such as my Dark Souls 3 High Lord of Walnor fan art, which inspired me to create the amulet tutorial to showcase the techniques I learned and developed during the process. Whether you purchase this tutorial or follow along for free on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for your continued support and I cannot wait to see the epic amulets you create soon.